how's it going everybody? It's Yago and Mike Gruppen with the Conquerors International Strength Team and we're in the heart of Grand Rapids for another edition of Meeting the Human Behind the Badge. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have some fun with Officer, my friend, Officer Ruth Walters. Would you introduce yourself? Like who you are? Who, who are you? What do you do? And uh, where do you do it? Okay, uh, Ruth Walters. I've been a police officer with Grand Rapids for 26 years now. I've done 14 years on patrol. I did 10 years of the detective unit, and I currently run a pr prison reentry program for our females. Uh, I do it here at Urban Family Ministry down at uh, Sherman and Eastern, which is where we're stationed right now. Um, and that I've been doing for the last almost three years. Sweet. Well, thank you so much for being willing to come out here and have some fun with us. We did get a, a special request to do our our feats over here, so we're gonna we're gonna go uh, in front of Eleanor's Kitchen, one of my one of my favorite places to get some rib tips. All right, and Mike, why don't you show them this uh, magic trick? All right, all right, Mike. I want you to meet my friend Elijah. Elijah. Yeah, oh, Alright, so uh so who, who's who's doing the trick? You 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 do the trick, but have him pick the card. Alright, alright. So Elijah, you're uh, you're gonna go ahead and pick a card, any card. Anyone at all. Do not show me the card. Alright, there you go. Just take it to yourself. Now what I want you to do is just uh just kinda go up to the camera a minute and uh and just show the show the show the camera a minute the <laughs> all right, he got it. He got it. Yeah. All right, good. Good. You got it now. Yeah. All right, good. Now, what you're gonna do is I want you to just put that card anywhere in between the in the, in the stack there. there you He's go. looking. He's there you looking. Go. <laughs> I ain't looking. Okay. I promise I'm not looking. <laughs> all right, now, now, uh, now, Officer Ruth, what I need you to do is I need you to go ahead and just hit my hands. And the card is going to just, I'm not gonna do anything. It's just gonna appear on the ground. You ready? Yeah. All right, ready? Off screw yep. on, on three. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Put yeah, your yeah. hands upside down. Huh? Dang, okay, okay, okay. Right. Ready? One, two, three. Is that your card? <laughs> <laughs> Officer oh, Ruse, oh, how hard yeah. did you hit my hand? Dang. Huh? Dang. What happened to the card? <laughs> All right, so, All right. so the reason I had you turn around is because behind your back I ripped the deck of cards in half. And uh, when you stuck the card back in, you only stuck it into half a deck. Hey, let's show the, show the so, camera what those look like. <laughs> All right, so what, what I'm going to do now, in case you missed it, I'm just going to take a half a deck of cards. I'm going to rip a half a deck in half. You ready? All right. All right, here we go. <laughs> what'd, you, what'd you think? Yeah, that was straight. <laughs> I mean, wow, I'll pick this up. To, to practice to rip a half, I mean, a deck apart, but then to go and rip a half a deck apart. That takes you to another level. Hey. Yeah. But we better not get in trouble for littering with yeah, the police. Top right here, you know. Busted right away. Now that was cool. <laughs> that was cool by you ripping the deck of cards. Now another another real common one is uh we take take phone books and we rip them in half. Phone books are a little hard to come by nowadays because we got Google, so we kind of moved on from ripping phone books to ripping iPads. I'm, I'm kidding. We don't, we don't rip iPads. But do you think it'd be pretty easy to rip a rip a, uh, a, a, a single sheet in half? A single sheet. Yeah. Single sheet. Yeah. Well, what about the whole thing? It's all hard. All right. We're gonna we'll have to see just how hard. So you see, like the, all the pages are there, nothing been taken out. Is it cut? Is it probably pretty cut already? Right? You want to come check it out? I do. Yep. All right, he's going <laughs> to check it out to make sure that the phone book is all good. Make sure everything's good. Okay. Okay. We're good? How about you? You want to take a look at it? I'm good. I saw it. I'm like, yep. Yep. That's Any? phone book. Uh -huh. you going to tear, okay, tear it in half. Tear it in half. You want to try it? Uh, I just did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. One, two, three. Damn! Oh my! Yeah. You see that man? Yep. 
Alright. Maybe leather yeah, paper right. dudes, but <laughs> God, <laughs> oh, I'm a little rusty because you saw I took a little I was like, hey, I haven't I haven't done it in like four years. It's been tough to find these things. Piece of cake, man, you got it. Come on, come on, you can do it. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I think I, I think I kick him off. We <laughs> go get some scissors. <laughs> man. Uh. You know, one of the reasons why I really wanted to, uh, I was like when I heard when. Um, when Dan, Officer Dan was talking about you or somebody, because I didn't know it was you, he was talking about <clears throat> um, a women's clear. Like, there's, there's about to be a women's clear. And uh, I was like, thank God, because with with um, with uh, the prison stuff that I do, there's a lot, I've found that with reentry stuff, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of help for guys, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of help for, uh, well, there's not a lot, but there's, there's, there's help for families. I didn't see a whole lot of stuff that was just helping women. And I was just like, man, you know, I mean, we only have what, Huron Valley, as far as a female prison here. Right. And so I was like, maybe it's just a sheer numbers thing that people don't focus on that. And so when Dan was like, yeah, you, you're gonna love Officer Ruth, she wants to do a woman's clear. I was like, yes, something something for our for our females that are because when we go into kent county jail to minister and all that one of the things is just like we know you're not doing life here you're going to be getting out we need to help set you on the right path mm -hmm. so anyway i'm really glad that you do that sorry that's okay well and even even the ones that are going down into into huron valley what 90 percent of them are still coming back yeah so either way, whether it's in the jail or whether it's in the prison, they still need that assistance and resources and mentoring and, you know, to get them back into the community and back doing the right thing. Yeah. Would you, would you tell everybody what CLEAR is and what you do with it? So CLEAR is a support group for ladies. Um, we meet every week on a weekly basis. We aren't doing lunch currently. I was making lunch for them uh, every week which was something I did at home and then I brought in. Um, so they got good homemade, mm. good homemade food. Mm. Um, but we talk about a lot of the issues that women have that are, not that it's, not that it's, uh, that's the word I'm looking for, um, specific okay. to, to the ladies. But generally speaking, ladies have more issues with boundaries and relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and generally that, a lot of times that is what has gotten them to where they are and why they're with me mm -hmm. um, or trauma yeah. that's the other thing um, they've been victimized uh, when they were younger and that's caused their addiction or that's caused you know them to to migrate towards who you know the group of people that they were hanging with when they got arrested or they called their charge so um, being able to to help them and hook them up with the resources if they need a ride to the pantry if they if they need someone, a lot of them just don't have a positive person to bounce questions off of. So I also run a Facebook group for them. Um, so they can message me with anything they want in the Facebook group. They can pr they can private message me. I'm more than happy to connect with them. They, A lot of them have my phone number. Um, so they can connect with me that way just to be able to bounce something off. And I'll get that. Hey, uh, this is what happened today. Was that right? Yeah, that was right. Yep, you did well. Proud of you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing what a, a little pat on the back can do for some people. Well, and a lot of them don't have that that good, reliable. What's the word I'm looking for? Consistent. Uh, support. Support, but but also also someone who, reasonable. Mm. There we go. That's mm. the word I'm looking for. Yes. A reasonable person to be able to talk to. Right. You know they've. They've always been in a toxic environment. Yeah. And so that's also a little uncomfortable for them. And yeah. so I try to make it as comfortable as I can, you know, and being a police officer and in uniform, sometimes that's even, even a little more uncomfortable for them. But I know a lot of ladies are like, you know what, you have totally changed what I thought of the police. Mm. Yeah. I, I like that. 
I, I, I definitely like uh, uh, Officer Dan's uh, view on why he dresses as a, a police officer while he was uh, when he was running clear. Mm -hmm. and, and and just like what you say when um, because I, I had somebody else say something too, where they were just like, man, you know, just take take the badge off, get rid of the gun, you know, you look less intimidating and stuff like that. But it was like, yeah, but that's the problem. If you don't, if you only associate those things with aggression, then when you do see a good cop or that, you know, somebody that you can, that you can relate to, you're still, you're still not going to see past that wall. So like if you, if you see a cop that's in uniform, head to toe, and you have a positive interaction with them, then, then that kind of like, I think that helps to take down the the, the immediate response to thinking that something is going to be automatically aggressive. Well, it's it's funny when I go into the jail, I go into King County Jail into the sobriety unit in the God Pod, and I talk to the ladies there. I think I go like every other month, and like I'll walk in and you'll see them. They're all like, mm -hmm. "God, where are the cops here? Yeah. Now what I do?" Yeah. And then I'll, you know, and as I explain to them why I'm here and about my program and about what we do and about what's available for them, you see them kind of go, oh. Yeah. And then by the time I'm done, they're like, this is super awesome. I never knew we had this. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And like, like just to see the transformation. And even I've got a gal that came to my meeting. She was on probation at the time. And she would sit in the back. She'd wear a hat down. Yeah. Wouldn't say a word. Yeah. And it took about a year, yeah. you know? And now she comes to the table, she's off probation, yeah. she engages. Like to see to see that transformation yeah. from her attitude initially coming yeah. to what she is now is pretty cool, I have to say. That is cool. Because I think a lot of times when people have that, that, that's just like a defense mechanism, you know, they protect themselves. Well, and it's like, oh man, I gotta be here. Yeah, there's but, that too. But then to find out that this is kind of a cool thing that you probably might not get anywhere else because yeah. we have those like girlfriend talks, like the stuff that you probably aren't supposed to talk about, we talk about. And so that brings that to it too of, oh man, I, it's not just me. Yeah. Like you're not alone. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you said you, uh, that's been a year long process. So obviously you're pretty intentional and consistent with her. So that's try to be, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm always here, you know, you screw. I mean, I have women, they screw up, they go back for 90 days. Yeah. They come back out. I'm, I'm here. Come back and see me. Yeah. You're not, you're not banned just because you screwed up. Right. Like, we're all human. Nobody's perfect, you know? And so you screw up, come back and see us love to have you back mm. like yeah that's how that goes and some of them don't understand that because they've never had that that unconditional support which is what which is what my group is i mean totally unconditional you want to be on the right path you want to do the right thing let's go it's good i'll i will work with you and i you know we'll figure this out together it's good so the doors open yeah come on back yeah man that's good because i know a lot of people could get on like a, a good path for a little while and then they screw mm -hmm. up and then they feel like oh I let so many people down especially if, if, what if I let officer roof down you know I've had that yep yep uh, one of my girls she she tripped up and she was super embarrassed mm -hmm. and I messaged her I'm like hey you know let me know when you want to come back yeah and she actually came into the police department one day and I saw her she said hi she turned around and walked back out and so we talked about it later and she's like I was just embarrassed I'm like yeah. I'm like, we all do stupid stuff. Right. Like, that's part of being human. Yeah. And, you know, come back and see us. That's good. Like, good people do bad things. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's kind of what I've always based um, stuff off of. A lot of times they get in bad situations. They get in bad relationships. But deep down inside, they are really, like, awesome people. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. So... So what what made you want to? Was there always a, a woman's clear name, or or did you did you start it uh, after that? Because like what what was it that inside of you that made you want to do this? So I'm also a college student, mm -hmm. just finishing my last semester to have my bachelor's degree. 
Um, Good job. Thanks. Yeah. And so I was taken, I did, it was a corrections class, and I had to do a paper on reentry. Mm -hmm. And I knew that we had this reentry group. I was working patrol at the time. No idea what it's about, no idea what they did. So I asked uh, Terry Dixon at the time was running it. I said, hey, can I come sit in on one of your groups one day? He's like, oh, yeah, no problem. Go ahead. So he explained to the guys why I was there. And I, you know, I went in uniform and I got to sit in. And just listening to the, to the men talk about their feelings and their situations and being able to communicate mm -hmm. and being able to identify emotions and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wait a minute, like, where's that women's group? Right. So I started asking questions about that and kind of pushing the issue. Good. So it took, uh, I don't know, a couple of years. But they got it. Uh, they made the posting for the position. I put in for it, and I got to start it. That's good. Yeah, that's good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're doing it. And so you did. Uh, you you before clear. Uh, have you been involved in any other kind of community police and stuff? Um. So I try to be at as many events as I can. However, generally family. I've got two young boys. And they're busy and what? sports. You got and kids? <laughs> You're an actual person behind the badge? Oh, they're so busy. Baseball and football and soccer. Yeah, and, yeah. And they just, oh, they take up a lot of my time. And so yeah. I, I try to be, um, Elijah does giveaways here for Christmas and for Thanksgiving. So I try to be at those. When I was on the road and uh, working nights for like Halloween, I always had candy in my car for the kids. I'd yeah. stop and give them candy. At Christmas time, um, I would always have candy canes in my car, so I would yeah. hand out candy canes. So just, it's just, I don't know. I, I organize um, when we're able to go into the hospital, children's hospital, a group of us going up yeah. there, and then Ronald McDonald House. Yeah. Um, which is, uh, I stay at the one in Chicago, so it's kind of a, a hard thing for me. Yeah, so. Ronald McDonald. Me and my wife have a, a little bit of experience with that one. Mm -hmm. We had uh, trouble with baby number three, and uh, she got rushed to the NICU for quite a while, and well, we had a whole support group where we met uh, people from Ronald McDonald's house. That's been, so that I know for they sure. Amazing. Yep, absolutely. So we go in there and we make a meal. That's good. Um, every couple months for them. So I organize that through the department too, and that is completely voluntary. That's good. So That's I good. I do what I can with the time that I have. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I I, I appreciate it. I, I and I. The reason why I was asking is because, obviously, because I'm in prison ministry. I'm in I'm prisons and jails until COVID and all that stuff mm -hmm. happened. And people would ask me, like, you know, why why do you... They, they had pretty abrupt ways of asking, in a roundabout way, why do I want to waste my time? You know, they'd be That's like... That's not a waste of time. I know that. Never a waste yep. of time. And I can say that because I struggled when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, had had some struggles. Mm -hmm. um, so I know what it's like. I mean, I know what it's yeah. like to struggle, but I was able to have some family support. Yeah. Um, and so with that, I was able to get back into college, you know, work three jobs, mm -hmm. and end up doing this, of all things. Yeah. Um, not even remotely on my radar when I started college. Um, but but knowing the struggle that, that some of these girls have, which is my biggest connection with them, yeah. is that I, you know, I've struggled too. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I love it because um, you know all of the stuff that I try to do, uh, you know, but I'm I'm still a dude. <laughs> right. And it's just there's just things that I just don't think about. Mm -hmm. Things that don't. It's not that they don't concern me, but they don't they don't worry me or they don't they don't hit my radar or something. So I'm just like. You know, that, that, that was one of the main things, like anytime we, we get uh, a couple a couple of young ladies uh, pop into my head right now, and I was just, you know, with situations like last year, summer, I think, now, or pretty close to, I'm sorry, was it, was it Christmas? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Point was, when I'm on the phone or texting, I'm like, yeah, have you run this by Officer Ruth? You know, her clear, and I've texted you a couple times. Mm -hmm. When is it exactly? Because I want to make sure that people know. By the way, when is your clear? Oh. Tuesday mornings, 10.30. Tuesday morning, 10.30. Yep. When you made your bad decisions and stuff like that, your family was there to help guide you. And uh, some of these ladies, when they get out, they're going to need somebody to help guide them too. Right, and they don't have that. Yeah. And so I know how important that is. I yeah. know what it did for me. Yeah and where I went because of it. 
without that, I probably would be sitting in the same chair they are. Yeah. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind. But I had the support, so. Any success stories you could tell us about? I Don't have, have to name anybody. I have a lot of them. Pick a food. Um, uh, me and, uh, so I've had two get their kids back. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, they, uh, the one, she came out and she just hit the ground running. Like she went out to Delaware, took care of some stuff out there, came back, came back on parole. Right, that's good. That is. That's I mean, that's that's one of those things, like you send them to Delaware, you, God, I hope you come back. Right. I want you to come back. And she did, back she came. And uh, did jump through all the hoops, did everything she had to do. I went to court with her uh, for one of her um, hearings in probate court for her kids. I went in uniform and sat with her and wow. got to see that process, which I've never, of course, I've never experienced. But yeah. that was that was that was good to be able to know how that kind of how that process is. Um, I couldn't imagine not having my kids, and I, yeah. and if I couldn't have my kids. I could only imagine what that day would be like to get them back. Yep, and then um, I helped her, you know, I, I tried to go out and advocate for housing yeah. for my ladies. I, you know, you gotta, granted, you gotta be part of my pro program. I have to know that you're doing well. Right. But, we don't have a lot of resources to waste, so you wanna know. Right, you, you know. right. A lot of people don't like to run to people with records. Right. Because they've had bad experiences. Right. So I wanna be able to place the people that are doing well right so that I can place more and more and more and change that right change that perception change that view of them um, so g being able to help her get an apartment and help her get some furniture and I met her caseworker and lo and behold she got full custody now she's got her kids man that's she's awesome. got a job she yeah man yeah so you're making a real difference I hope so. Like you're making a real difference. The, what, what you're doing, but, go ahead. But they do the work. Yeah. I mean, I cannot do the work for them. Yep. I can hook them up with the resources. I can be their cheerleader. Yep. But honestly, they're, they're the great ones. They're the yep. ones that are doing all this work to make all this happen. Like they want this, they can have it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Like they, yeah. They, they are the heroes in that. Yeah. But it, I think I think a lot of it does come back to that that pat on the back and then having somebody in your corner that believes in you. Mm -hmm. Hope's a big thing. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I met a lot of people who are hopeless and just don't have any. And you like you, you try to. I, I we do we do like school assemblies mm -hmm. and stuff like this. And I and I would tell the kids uh, <clears throat> that that all of the words, all the encouragement, and all the stuff that that we. You know, tell you, you know, you're the greatest, you can do it, da, 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 don't give up. You know, all of those things don't mean anything if they don't internalize it. So I always like, hey, say internalize. They say internalize. I'm like, you have to believe in yourself. I can believe in you, but if you can believe in you and your abilities to, to make the right decisions, to, to you know, to, to do the right things, to be consistent with your, your classes and, and, and the things that you got to do, like the meetings and stuff, then you're going to get good results. But they got to believe it and they got to be willing to do it. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't do it for them. Right, right. But still, they're gonna be, they're gonna, it's, it's part of their story. It's part mm -hmm. of their journey. And is, is the day that they met Officer Ruth. Mm -hmm. so that's awesome. Yeah. So before that, you did, you did do patrolling, uh, like down here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I was, um, I, I did south and I did east. So. Whew. That's where I like to be. Yeah. It's busy. Yeah. Uh -huh. As we were able to hear. Right. It's busy down here yeah. today. Yeah. But yeah. Wow. So like one of the things I, I was like uh, wondering, uh, I used to be a bouncer in, in, at, at a few nightclubs and I did security all over. But Probably ran into as one. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. But I never, I always thought for sure that uh, there's there's a good chance that I'm going to get my teeth knocked out. Every night, you know, you're thinking like mm -hmm. that. And, you know, in a month, we probably had like maybe three or four blowout fights. But then most of them are just like takedowns and, and you know, restraints and stuff. But I never really thought like today, outside of a separate story for another day, 
I never really thought like today is the day I could I could die. So mm -hmm. I was just like wondering like how like what what do you what gets you through that? Like thinking about that every day, or maybe you don't think about it. I don't. Good. I don't. I we have great training. Yeah. I know I'm well trained. Good. I know my training will kick in when it needs to. Yeah. Um, and if it's my day, it's my day. I'm not going to change that. I don't know if you know how that sounds, but like I've heard a couple of other cops say stuff like that, and I'm like, yikes, that is. Well, so, you know, some get hit in the vest, mm -hmm. some don't. Yeah. Like, what? I, I, I will do the best I can, and I will put up the best yeah. fight that I can. Yeah. And I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I think of myself as mentally strong. Yeah. Um, and I think that's half the battle is yeah. being mentally strong, knowing you're going to win the fight. Yeah. Well, I already told every officer that I come in contact with, they all know that we, we are always praying for you guys, mm -hmm. like day and night for sure. Because uh, we appreciate you and love you and everything you do. Um, but yeah, so you, you said you did uh, patrol. Now, patrol is when you're, you're, you're like in the, in the vehicle riding around and stuff. Yep. You know? I did about so. 10 years on nights and Ten. four years. On days. Alright. Mm -hmm. Alright, alright. Kids like it? They think mom's a hero? Uh sometimes. <laughs> sometimes they're like, ah, oh, that's not so cool, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> well you know, kids kids that uh that know me as a conqueror think that my, my kids must be like, Man, your dad's awesome. My kids are like, not really. Right, exactly. Remember right. the man can bend still, he doesn't let me get away with anything. Exactly. <laughs> So I was like, yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. I definitely get it. Um, man. It's uh, about 23 minutes right there. Just sitting there. Okay. Was, uh, was there something you wanted to... What, 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 what do you want people to know about you and, and the GRPD? Um, I don't know. We're human. We make mistakes too, yeah. just like everybody else does. Um, we do our best not to, by all means. Um, people, there's a lot of issues that go on in different areas of the country. Um, I would like to think a lot of that is training. Um, if you don't have good training, you're not going to be a good officer. That's the, that's the bottom line. I don't know. People are like cops aren't always nice. Well, police work and the jobs we do is not, people don't call us because they're having a great day. Hey, I'm having a great day, let's call the cops. Right, right. So you don't know what that officer came from. Maybe yeah. I just, you know, had to tell a lady that her husband died mm. or that her child died mm. or I just got done dealing with a dead baby or a homicide victim or yeah. I had to take, ugh, worst thing ever, I had to take somebody's kids away from them. Yeah. Like we have to go do that kind of stuff. And just the you know the screams of the kids and and reaching for their mom and stuff like that bugs us you know so for for people to think that that doesn't affect us oh it does and over years and daily so it's it's just one of those it's a little it's a little give and take on both sides you're not having a good day maybe I'm not either yeah you know. You know, one of the things, uh, Officer Gomez, uh, when I sat down with him, uh, I was like, you know, and this is a question I'd ask you too, mm -hmm. like, like, what can we do to work together? What can we do to bridge this gap? Like the whole purpose of this mm -hmm. video series is to help with the healing between the community and law enforcement. One of the good, one of the things that Officer Gomez uh, said, he was like, you know, if you have a good in interaction with a cop, let his boss know, you know, call him or, or, yeah. or, or call his boss and, and you know and I was like yeah you know I, I never really thought of that like like what 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 do you think would would help like bridge this gap between well, us all I don't know honestly like a lot of people have contact with us in an enforcement type way yeah like you see me at the gas station come up and say hi yeah I'm I'm more than you know I got time if I'm at the gas station I got time you know I'm more than happy to chat with you you know, and I, I think you'll find most cops are. Yeah. Um, most cops are willing to chat, willing to talk to the community. You know, I don't, I don't see any reason they wouldn't. 
right. honestly. Right. Um, but and and that's that part of that is that having that interaction that's not yeah. enforcement related. Yeah, one day at a time. Mm-hmm. One officer at a time. You know, it's just I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to get a a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different ideas on on how to do this, how to how to because. I like it that people are having like this conversation, but I, I want to see what the what the doing looks like, you know. Like, it's hard. It's hard because there's so much. I wouldn't necessarily say bad information, but you see a cop, that's the last person you want to go talk to. Honestly, generally speaking. Yeah, generally speaking. Right. <laughs> I don't want to go talk to the cop. Why do I want to go talk to the cop? What is it get a recipe for some? No, we're not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, hopefully this is going to help to change that perspective, you know. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid, they used to do something to officer friendly. I actually thought a cop last name was friendly. His name wasn't friendly. <laughs> <laughs> it was like in elementary school, we had a cop, I want you guys to meet officer friendly. And and uh, and so, they, you know, there was, you know, the Conquerors, we used to have something called the Con and the Cop, was so like about five years ago or something like that and mm-hmm. we would we would take cops in to do our uh, school assemblies with us and stuff yeah. and that went over really really well yeah. but but then uh, it, it seems like um, I don't know how, how come we, we, we didn't uh, continue doing that I think we did it probably a couple years and actually I talked to some of those cops about doing doing these sit down so I look forward to, to, to doing that with them um, but uh, you know it's just another another attempt to, to, to get everybody on the same page about stuff like that. Yeah.